So one of the most fundamental tools in the entire visually impaired community, it is the standard white cane. And at WeWalk, we've realized that whilst this tool really is fantastic, it kind of is from the Stone Age by this point. You know, we've come to a world where we talk about autonomous vehicles, and yet, you know, we're still sending visually impaired people out there with what is essentially a stick. It doesn't take you anywhere. It doesn't take you to a coffee shop. It doesn't help you seek employment. It's just a stick. It's great to meet you. Um, so tell me, I know you have a, a visual impairment. So tell, talk me through what we're, what we're looking at because the majority of this here, to my eyes, looks like a standard cane, like a graphite cane, but all these, all the smarts, if you like, are in are in the top. This is your product, the top, the top bit. So, is that a fair assessment? That is a completely fair assessment. So we've kept the form factor the same. This is actually just an Ambitech standard cane. What we've done is we've chopped off the rubber handle. We've manufactured our own adapter, and we've crammed all the tech bits into here, which is the new handle, the WeWalk Smart Cane, essentially. So you can fold it up, use it like a standard cane. It's got the ultrasonic sensor up front over here, which gives you upper body obstacle detection. So this is, so this is a camera, essentially? Mm -hmm. Well, simpler than that. It literally just ultrasound. And WeWalk knows where the obstacles are because of the bounce back of the ultrasonic waves. And you can actually set how far WeWalk picks up these obstacles. So you can detect things that are just above your head to things that are by your chest. Things which the typical cane will definitely miss. You know, if you think of things like tree branches and you're just walking down the street doing this, how can you possibly you know, pick up on something that's low hanging. But where it gets really, really cool and the really exciting bits about WeWalk is when you actually connect it to our WeWalk smartphone application where all the really cool tech bits work together. So we've got a touchpad up front, as well as a speaker and a microphone, a compass, a gyroscope, and an accelerometer all built into this. And the WeWalk app has navigation. It's got exploration mode. So as you're passing by certain shops, it'll tell you what shop is around you. Um, we've got public transport integrations with over 1,500 cities where you can go to a bus stop, figure out when the bus is coming and all. You can access all this information whilst on the move. You don't have to worry about taking out your phone, swiping your cane. You've got loads of things going on around you. It can be very stressful for someone that's visually impaired. And it's all controlled seamlessly through this one device. Can I ask you a personal question? Of course. So if I was walking down a street and I saw somebody with a cane appearing to struggle, my natural inclination is to approach them and say, do you need any help? That's really difficult to do with social distancing. How does a, something like this, you know, whether a smart cane, a WeWalk-like product, how has that helped you and, and, and how could it help others, do you think? So the whole principle and the whole reason, you know, technology like the white cane exists is because of independence. You know, the ultimate goal of someone being visually impaired is to learn how to cope with their visual impairment. You know, pass the initial stages of denial, pass all the cognitive stress which comes with visual impairment, and to reach a point where they can self-sustain themselves. They can seek employment, uh, they can go outside, they can mobilize independently, they can build meaningful connections and friendships. It's a bigger picture, right? And I think that problem has become so exacerbated during COVID, as you said, very rightly so. You know, you can't just sort of go out there and know that there's gonna be someone that's gonna help you. And so with WeWalk, we realized, hey, now more than ever, we need to give our visually impaired community a tool that gives us independence, a tool that reassures us that we can leave the house. And it only takes one bad journey, it takes one bad experience, one close call for someone that's visually impaired to just not want to travel anymore. And that's been our vision now, that reassurance, that confidence, being able to say, hey, if you wake up in the morning, you've got your WeWalk with you. You'll get your info about the weather, you'll get your info about the bus stop, you'll make sure you'll get to where you need to go. And you'll get there safely, effectively, and independently. Tell me a bit about the kind of data that, that this is gathering. What else can you do or what are you doing with that data? We're actually using this data, we're crunching it, we're pulling it out and we're using AI, thanks to Microsoft's Azure services, uh, to actually do some more really cool things. Firstly, we're almost creating the Fitbit for visually impaired people. As well. We've realized that, hey, people have made smartwatches. They've made devices that can count your steps. You even have smart rings that can tell you how you're sleeping. But why not build all this great stuff into a device which visually impaired people literally use on a day-to-day -day basis? And that's what we're doing. We're pulling this data from WeWalk to tell users how their cane is being moved, looking at things like their arc length, their midline, which could be a long-term representation of posture, to give them their steps, the places they've visited, and in the long-term with AI, to build a personal profile for them, 
So apart from the personal benefit to the visually impaired person, where you can actually have a way to diagnose your own mobility characteristics, we can now feed back to healthcare professionals, mobility trainers who work with visually impaired people to improve their mobility. We can use our data to influence infrastructure design, you know, to better understand the needs of our very diverse communities. And it's through these sort of tr these trials, you know, working with our community, um, that we realize, wait a second, you know, software isn't enough. We need to fix the fundamental hardware problems. And what better way to start than with the white cane? Is there a stigma to using a cane? And if there is, can something like this is, is just, can that help overcome that that stigma? It took me a while to want to accept that these tools, like this cane, are there to help me. They're not there as identifiers of all who keep visually impaired, but they're necessary tools. And one thing we're trying to find is that by making this device cool, by telling young kids, hey, look, it's not just a stick. You know, it's something which you can talk to. It's something which talks to you. It's something which is there to help you. We hopefully can take away that stigma. We can elicit pride in our, you know, in our community. Hmm. We can almost take this shift from, oh, he's got a cane, poor guy, which, you know, really isn't the way we want to be looking at a visually impaired community but rather to go, look how amazing that game is. Not only is this simple stick giving that person amazing opportunities in life, but there's a device which really adds a value-added package. It's a device that makes it cool. You know, a device that represents pride in visual impairment. And that's the thing.